returns to him void. So here is our program for today. Oh, 
will know what that chapter is all about. The faith chapter. Hebrews 11. I'll begin the first, first verse. Chapter 11. Amen. The Bible says, uh, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report, and through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And I've heard people try to say that when God created the earth, somehow there was a big ball of wet mud somewhere and it was, it was wet and muddy and he had to straighten it out and separate the, the dirt from the water. But I don't believe that. I think our scripture here says that the things which are seen were not made from things which do appear. Now God made everything out of nothing, you know, by his power and by his word. It says, by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, uh, by the which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death uh, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. Uh, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's the end of our scripture there. Uh, I believe it was Brother Johnny Lewis preached this one time it was it must have been back in the 90s uh, but the, the, the topic he uh, had was the first two words of, of our uh, uh, Hebrews 11 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for and he was preaching about now faith the kind of faith that gets things done now you know not some way down the road somewhere he he, uh, he brought it out that now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And I believe that, I believe it was him, I believe it was Johnny Lewis preached that. And uh, it's a simple thought, but it stuck with me all these years, you know, from, from the 90s till now. I remember him preaching that about now faith. And that's kind of what we need. Uh, the scripture there uh, doesn't really talk about uh, what, what we're thinking now faith, you know, like right now. It's, it's saying now we're, we're studying faith. We're now uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And I looked up the substance in the dictionary. It says it's a noun and uh, that which has mass and occupies space or matter, a material of a particular kind or constitution it went on to talk about this, one of these modern dictionaries that popped up on my computer. It, said, it talked about substance of use, you know, so they got into that third category. Uh, that don't, that that's, doesn't have anything to do with the Bible, but it's, it's uh, that which has mass and occupies space. Like this pulpit is, is uh, uh, matter, it's a substance, it's something uh, that we can see and feel and, and understand. 
It said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. In other words, we don't see it, but our faith sees it. Our faith feels it. And our, our faith knows it's coming because we hope for it. You know, and it says it's the evidence of things not seen. And uh, the word evidence is also a noun. It's a thing or a set of things helpful in forming a conclusion or a judgment. The broken window, it says, was evident that a burglary had happened. Uh, scientists weigh the evidence against the, the hypothesis. They, they, they get evidence and, and weigh it. And uh, evidence is something that will help us make a decision. Amen. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Some, something indicative. indicative uh, an indication or a set of indications. Something that tells you uh, this probably happened. You know, it, I saw I saw no evidence of grief on the mourner's face. Uh, you you you, someone was uh, mourning. They said they were in mourning, but you couldn't tell by looking at them that they were mourning. They had no evidence of it. And uh, the means by which an allegation may be proved, uh, such as an oral testimony or documents or physical objects, we think of that in the legal terms. You know, evidence of a, of a crime or something like that. There's always evidence that gives us that conclusion yeah. in faith it says is the evidence of things not seen uh, we have uh, our faith gives us that evidence you know we we, we can say it's not material uh, evidence but it's evidence nonetheless you know and it's the substance of things that we hope for uh, the evidence of things not seen and uh, the Lord when he was ministering and working with his disciples uh, a lot of the time, he would scold them for their unbelief. Uh, in Matthew 8:26, uh, it's where uh, they had a storm at sea, and he calmed the sea. And he, sa he saith unto them, uh, and that's Matthew 8:26, uh, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? And then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. Uh, another time in Matthew 14:31. It says, immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. And that's where Peter uh, asked, if you're the Lord, let me come to you on the sea. You know, he was going to walk on the sea. And, uh, and uh, right, it says, uh, and he saw the waves boisterous and began to sink. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? You know, the Lord had just infinite faith i believe you know being being who he was you know even uh from an early age he knew that he was gonna be on that cross one day you know he knew that he was from god and that he was going back to god you know he had that kind of faith uh also uh in matthew 17 uh, 14, I'll begin reading there. It says, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him, to the Lord, and saying, uh, Lord, have mercy on, on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed, and oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless, and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long will, shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. And then came the disciples to Jesus apart, and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, unbelief uh, and for verily i say unto you if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed ye shall say unto this mountain uh remove hence to yonder place and it shall be removed and nothing shall be impossible unto you uh and he, he added though how be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting amen and uh, from here we go to 1 John 5, 11. There's so much in the Bible about faith. And, uh, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son hath not life. 
These right. things have I written unto you uh, that believe on the name of the Son of God, Amen. that ye may know that ye right. have eternal life, right. and that ye may believe in, on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask him anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. And uh, faith is something that you've got to build on. You, uh, one, one time the disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. And I remember as a, as a new Christian back in 1977, I had been in the Lutheran church where I grew up, and I had to read the Bible over again a, a couple times to get it right, because uh, every place in the Bible, uh, we, we tried to explain away a lot of the miracles and things, and in the Lutheran church, they, they believe that the day of miracles is over with, and, and they, they don't hardly believe in healing, you know, and it's, it's weird, but that's what they taught, and they would tiptoe around all the... Uh, all the verses about healing and, and, uh, and the gifts of the Holy Ghost, they would just kind of waltz around that, and uh, we wouldn't dwell on it very much. But I had to go and relearn all that and about faith. And I remember, uh, it was back in Michigan, I had 10 acres of land about the same shape as this property here, and I had a, a five-speed bicycle that I loved to get on, and I could uh, go about five miles into town on that bike and get something to eat. I, I would, even if my car was working, I'd prefer to take the bike just, just for, it was a beautiful country and I would, I would go along. But uh, some of the places I went, the, the farmers had dogs that would jump off the porch and, and head right for me. And I'd usually get off the bike and, and leave the bike on the side where the dog was and I'd be on the other side. And, uh, and I learned, uh, some some of them dogs were pretty mean too. They would run out and rah, 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 you know, and, and, uh, and here comes this great big dog. And uh, I learned to call on the name of Jesus. I said, in the name of Jesus, you stop right there. And uh, I remember one one farmer. He was not he was not too far from the road. He could see what I was doing. But his dog jumped off the porch and ran at me. And uh, I said, in the name of Jesus, you stop right there. I hollered it out. And that dog run to the end of the driveway and sat down. <laughs> it sat down so pretty. You know, he just sat there and let me go by. You know, and the, the farmer, he, I could see him on the porch like he's scratching his head, <laughs> wondering what's going on with that dog. But I learned, you know, simple little things like that. I learned to call on the name of Jesus early, you know, in my Christian walk. And, I was glad that I had a, a place where they were full gospel. They were a good preacher. He'd been in Texas. He'd preached in Texas, down Round Rock, Texas. Brother, uh, Brother uh, Royer, his name was James Royer. And he taught me a lot of things. And, uh, and I learned faith one thing at a time, you know, in uh, uh, growing up and, and getting on in, in, uh, in the Lord. I learned faith more and more. And uh, I learned faith to, to pay tithes. I, 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 uh, I started out working, and I would pay uh, tithes on my take-home pay. And uh, I, I would get that. But then I realized, well, I pay on my take-home pay. That means if I get a refund, I still owe tithes on that refund. Right. You know, so that's, that's what I would do. And for many years, that's what I did. And... Uh, I paid tithes on, on my take home only, but then I would, I would pay tithes on my refund too. And uh, I learned over the years not to try to sit down and calculate whether I could afford to pay tithes. Just let God take care of that part. He does the math way better than I do. You know, he, he'll bless, you know, he, he blesses me. I, I, I believe in paying tithes. Some people, I, I saw some people on, on the YouTube, they're trying to, uh, say that uh, you're not supposed to pay tithes in the New Testament, but uh, there's one place in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, though, the Lord said, uh, "Sell all that you got and give it to the poor." You know what are you going to do with that? You know that that's way more than tithes. But uh, I believe it's a thing of faith, though. Uh, if you decide to do that and you want to pay tithes, God will bless you. I know, and let Him do the math. Let Him do the the calculating. And there's no telling what I have saved 
you know, that I could have had to pay for. And like Brother Royer back in Michigan, he preached tithing. And uh, he said, if you don't pay tithes, you're going to pay it somewhere. You know, you're going to be paying it to the doctor. You're going to be paying it to the lawyer. You're going to be paying it uh, to the police, you know, pull you over, give you a ticket, whatever. Uh, and God will uh, put holes in your pockets. But uh, I'm glad that when I learned that, and I learned faith a little bit more every day, and I learned to, to pay tithes back then, uh, God sewed up the holes in my pockets, you know, and, uh, and uh, he took care of all that. And, and I let him do the math on that, and I've never, never come short yet. You know, I've always got something left. You know, whatever I have need of, uh, I'll have need of. Sometimes I've got to buy tires or something or, or got to do something with the house. But I've got the money to do it with. I just thank God for it. Amen. But uh, learning faith and growing in faith is, is something we, we pick up. And uh, it says tribulation work with patience, you know, and, and patience will hope, you know. All these things can work together. And sometimes even things that, that are against us, even sickness, you know, uh, if we never had any sickness, you know, how would we know that, that God would heal? You know, he's, he's brought me through so many things. My, my heart actually stopped years ago when I had uh, a heart attack and I ended up with a, with a four-way bypass. My heart actually stopped at home and there I was alone and they would have found me dead after a few days, I imagine. Yeah. I'd be laying there dead, but uh, I would lay there. Nobody had a defibrillator for me. Nobody had anything, you know, and uh, I remember uh, I had such a pain in my heart. It was terrible pain, probably the worst I ever felt in my life. But then uh, I felt my legs giving way, and I flopped. I knew I, the bed was right behind me, so I just sort of shoved myself, and I fell on the bed, and I lay there. And the, the first thing I noticed was there's no pain. All that pain I had was gone, but I knew that my heart had stopped because of my body. I lost all my strength in my legs, and I, I, gave, I passed out. Like, and, uh, but I don't think I ever lost consciousness. That's the, the main thing. And I laid there. I said, where, where did the pain go? You know, it's, it's amazing uh, that there was no pain in that. And uh, I sing that song about uh, 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 someday I'm going to be crossing that chilly, chilly waters of, of death, you know. I'll, Oh, pass through them chilly water. There was no chilly water. You know, I, I was pain free and I started to think about the Lord laying there, started thinking about the Lord. All of a sudden, uh, I felt that pain coming back. You know, I said, oh, my, my heart must be going again. You know, and it sure enough got going. I, I remember I, I got a bunch of aspirins. I was taking them and I had the nitroglycerin tablets. I took a bunch of them. And I got well enough to even drive myself to the emergency room. And uh, every time I'd had a heart attack before, or thought I did, uh, I'd go to the doctor and they would say, we don't see no evidence of any heart attack. We, we can't find the evidence. And this time I went and they said they found the evidence. They, they said there's the enzymes or something that they look for. And they said, you've had a heart attack. And sure enough, like, like Brother Charles <laughs> ended up with that uh, bypass, you know, surgery, but I, I had to have faith for that, but I, I felt going under the surgeon's knife and, and all that heart uh, operation, everything like that, I felt a peace in my heart, and it's just priceless, you know, to have that kind of faith, and uh, sometimes praying for yourself, something when you're hurting, it's harder to have faith for your own self than it is for somebody else. You know, you can pray for a, a loved one. You can pray for them better than you can pray for yourself. But so many times I remember I'll, I'll have a pain. And my, my foot will go out of joint uh, in bed. It'll, it'll my, just like my, uh, my uh, arch and my foot will try to drop and I'll get flat-footed or something like that. And uh, it'll hurt and I'll, I'll just grab it and, and grab a hold of it in the name of Jesus. And I'll push that bone back up in there, and pretty soon it, it'll just ease off, and it gets good, and I can sleep the whole night, you know. And I, I thank God there's so many nights 
I can go to bed and not have a pain in my body. And I don't, I don't understand it. You know, uh, the Bible says, remember your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come. Well, for me, I'm 77. The evil days haven't come yet. You know, and I'm, I'm glad for that. I, I know the Lord's coming. I, and it's not that I haven't had trouble. I've had a, a lot of things happen. I had the COVID. I had all this kind of stuff happen. And I had appendicitis when I was younger. And uh, all kinds of things that, that was wrong. But uh, I, I've overcome them all through the Lord. You know, through Him, through faith, through what He did for me. So many times I'd be anointed with oil, call the, the elders to come. And uh, and pray over me, and uh, and I'm and I'm well later on, uh, and I I always amazed uh, sometimes when you're in pain and and you go to bed and you're hurting, uh, and all of a sudden you just go drift off to sleep, and the pain will leave you, and and you don't thank the Lord right away because you don't realize that you know you're just. Uh, off there and uh, and resting real good and in the morning I'll I'll wake up and I said that pain is gone you know that pain is gone and I start thanking the Lord for it you know it sneaks up on you but I, whatever way it, it does you know it it's a wonderful thing to have faith and it, it says like in John it said uh, uh, we have confidence toward God we do those things that are pleasing in his sight He's, he said uh, and this is the record that God hath given us to his uh, eternal life and this life is in his son he that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son hath not life these things have I written unto you in that book of first John uh, that uh, that you believe in the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. And there's another place in the Bible. I didn't look it up, but it, it says... Uh, if uh, God uh, spared not his own son, you know, and sent him to die for us, how shall he not also freely give us all things that we need? You know, I believe we can have all things. And like the Lord said, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed. And if we have that faith of the grain of mustard seed, we can, we can ask that and we can believe it in our heart. And, uh, this has been the Amen Corner radio program with Dave Foran. This program is on the air each Saturday from 10.30 to 11. Thank you all for tuning in. If you're looking for a home church or a church that to visit, come to our services here at Harbor Light Holiness Church on Highway 42 East, just about two miles from Wilson on the left-hand side, just past Tarts Mill Road. Sunday service is at 10.30 a.m. and evening service is at 6 p.m. Our midweek service is at 7 p.m. on Tuesdays so you can come and visit. Brother Irvin Lewis is our pastor. He'll be very happy to see you there.